So most of us are never prepared for negative feedback. We love positive feedback. We love anything that's going to build us up. We love anything that's going to encourage us and is showing us that we're doing exactly what we have dreamt about doing and meant doing and changing faces and lives and all of that good stuff. But when we get negative feedback or feedback that's not pleasant or feedback that's unwanted or feedback that's unnecessary, it really, it, it causes a couple different things to happen. It causes us, one, to really kind of respond in a knee-jerk reaction, but it also allows us to kind of take a step back and think, really, where is all of this coming from? And that's something that I have to get a lot better at. And as I'm getting older, I'm getting extremely better at with not bringing the response and energy that I get back. You know, in the profession that we're in, we have to expect negative feedback. So positive and negative feedback have to really come in order for you to be successful. I have done and been motivated more off of negative feedback than I have off of positive. It's not until I get something negative or someone says something or someone questions or judges that gets my mind going to say, how could I have done it different? What can I do to improve? And what am I going to do to improve? So that's kind of where it's been a kind of launching pad for me. When we first launched Save Brazil, um, I got so much resistance um, for launching the line. How could someone like me who is not a veteran of 20 or 30 years come along and create a line and make money from it? I got, you know, very negative feedback from, you know, a couple people in particular saying that they, you know, uh, the wax that I have is not mine and it's not my, you know, product. I mean, I have gotten so much negative feedback with Save Brazil, but on the flip side, a lot of the negative feedback that's been put into the groups and on Facebook page is what's gotten us our clients. It's kind of proven really them wrong. The other part of it, too, is that, you know, our industry is very old school. They don't want to move with technology. No one wants to be on progressive and, and, and cutting edge. If you bring something that no one has seen before or someone can question, someone can always say what you're doing is wrong. And someone can always say, I can do it better. So, you know, it, when I say that you have to have positive and negative feedback, you have to have it in order to, for it to keep you inspired. And for me, negative feedback always inspires me because it, it really allows me to think. And you should really take it that same way. If someone comes back and see in this day and age between Yelp and Google and Facebook and all these different reviews, people can hide behind their computer and give you a review. And it's, it's unfair on some times. I mean, on some things, it's very much unfair. It's unfair that someone can say things, especially if it's not true, especially if they're making up or if they've never been a client of yours. Like that, I don't agree with. But some feedback can really be used for good. And when I see, you know, or I hear, oh, I've never had a bad, you know, feedback. I have a five plus rating. I have this, I have that. But you kind of need that negative to kind of keep you balanced. If you're so great and everyone loves you, there is not one, one person who could say you could improve on something or something could have been different or that facial could have been different or that waxing service could have been different. How is that going to change you, you know, in two, five, ten years from now if everything you do is perfect? If no one ever gives you honest feedback. And I think for me that's always been kind of the the reminder for myself is that honest feedback to a point is great feedback. Now, when you go to the left and start acting a fool and start talking crazy, you know, I got to reel you back in a little bit, but you know, it's, it's kind of where you have, um, people who just kind of, it has to be there in business. You have to have both good and bad. If you don't have bad, you will never be inspired to continue to achieve, to go to the next level. And I've learned that in, and I've been in business now for 11 years. I have been out of corporate America for 11 years. I started my solo business owner in the real world in 2005. So I really have had a gambit of experience being a business owner, but it's always the reviews and comments that kind of bring you back 
to like, okay, well, maybe I should do this differently. Or maybe I should not have done that. That was successful. That wasn't successful. Those are all of the things that we have to really be more accepting of. And including myself. I'm speaking to myself. And the fact that you want to be great at what you do. And I wanted to be so good at what I do. And I'm great at what I do. But when you have resistance, that's where you struggle. Struggle only comes when there's a resistance. So when I, when I say, you know, negative and positive feedback, you can grow with both. But you will grow more with negative. And it's a hard thing to stomach. I did not realize this until my fifth, sixth, seventh year of business. That the negative feedback is what's keeping me going to prove myself that I can do better. Now, when I started off, we didn't have the crazy Yelp and all of that. We also were able to hang up on crazy people. You know, don't, don't come and see me then if you don't want to do, you know, now they'll go run on the Yelp. Well, she hung up on me and told me not to come. <sighs> and, and in this day and age, we have more people, more estheticians having to brown nose and kiss butts because of the fact of us not wanting them to go to Yelp. Um, and that's kind of what has made my decision very easy on whether or not I will continue to practice when I'm in Texas because I don't really need all of that. I, I really, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've done my due. I may, I don't know, I haven't decided. I go back and forth. I have a lot of people that say, ah, you should still do it, yeah, yeah. But because of that, it's hard for us to be honest with estheticians. The reason I can be honest and do my videos and do my memes and make fun of is because of my personality, to be honest. I can tell one of my clients that she has a mohawk coming out of her butt because she did. I didn't say it offensive. I wasn't, you know, being, I wasn't laughing at her at all. I just told her, you know, you have one. You can't see it. I see it. And it's not until you can get to a place of being comfortable with yourself that it becomes that kind of camaraderie with your clients. And you have to have passion. And the passion has to come from a genuine place. If it's money driven, there'll be a point where you look at yourself and say, why am I doing this? I enjoy what I do. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy the creative part. I enjoy the instruction. I enjoy the camaraderie and conversations that I have with lots of people in the industry. I do love that. There are some days though, when I get crazies, you know, today we had crazies emailing us outside of this crazy that we we're talking about. Um, it's just people, sometimes you just kind of question what exactly is going on in your mind. Where are you in this earth? Are you on earth in your mind? I mean, those are the kind of questions that help me center myself because I think some people, their mind is not on earth. Their body's here, but their mind is gone. I, mm. It's when you have to do the woosah and say, okay, how can I help you? As I'm squeezing. Ooh.